we are live you can start i'll be joining up good evening everybody Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Let me just project my slide for today. So, uh, today's slide basically focuses upon the basic of the language used in Flutter, and that language is Dart. So, we'll be dealing with that, and we'll be understanding like what are the flexibility the language offers to us, what are the ways we can use it, and what should be the syntactical and the programmatic approach while using the language. All right. So let me just project my screen. Just one second. Uh, is it visible? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, so today, guys, uh, we are going to uh, discover what Dart Basics is. So this is our second day of drill. On first day, we discuss what Flutter is and what are the ins and outs of Flutter and how to get started. And I hope you all are done with installation. So we are just going to dive in and learn how to use Dart. It's the weapon to conquer the mobile app development world with the help of Flutter. So yeah. So here are a few notes on Dart. So Dart is an object-oriented language. Uh, when I talk about object-oriented languages, I'm talking about the use of classes, the use of objects. So if you are very new, like what classes, what objects are, you need not to worry about that. We'll be discovering it, and they are very easy to understand and very easy to go with. Also, Dart is a statically typed language. Uh, statically typed language means whenever you assign a variable, so that variable should have a type, right? So if you are typing like a variable number is equal to one, two, three, then that variable has to be type of int or number, right? Or float or double, like in other languages you might have already noticed. If you're typing your name, then it should be a string. Likewise, so Dart has a C style syntax. If you come from a JavaScript background, C sharp or C C plus plus background, then the syntax of Dart will be really very you know easy for you to go with. So it's really uh, an awesome language when it comes to the adaptation from different languages. So yeah, and Dart runs on multiple runtime environments. So this is like uh, one of the most key features which allows Dart to be a cross-platform language because the same code. So whatever you write in Dart. Dart compiles or executes that code into a particular virtual machine. And that virtual machine is called a Dart VM. All right. So if you have uh, coded in Java, then you might be knowing like what JVM is, what JDK is. Similarly, Dart has its own virtual machine in which it executes its code. And that's called Dart VM. Right? All right, Dart VM. So everything is getting is uh, it gets transpiled into platform specific codes. So if you want to develop an application and you want the application to run on web, then Dart VM Dart allows uh, flexibility to convert that code into JavaScript, and that JavaScript uh, can be run in browser. So similarly, the same thing happens for Android phones and iOS devices and Dart uh, desktop machines as well. So this is not something very boring as of now because these are the basics of Dart and how to proceed with that. So these are really basics, okay? <clears throat> so yeah, so to get started, we are going to use a tool called Dartpad. Dartpad is an online code editor and we can code Dart in that and learn how to proceed with that. So yeah, I'm going to launch Dartpad now. <clears throat> Just a minute, let me project. Okay. 
so yeah you have to go to uh, this website called dartpad.dev you can head over to this link and you can open dartpad and we will together get our hands dirty with dart yeah thank you all right so like in any other language when you get started you are told to you know uh, to create your first you to create a first hello world program similarly we are going to create a hello world program in dart so let's do that So uh, those of you who are just getting started with programming, this might look a bit different to you and something very new. So you need not to worry about this as of now. I will break down each and everything in very detail and you'll be able to understand like what's happening. So first of all, let's try to run this. You can see uh, this is the console where you'll get your outputs of the code and you will get the documentation here. Documentation here means reference to a particular keyword so let's say print is a keyword here so print what print does is uh, prints a string representation of the object to the console so whatever is put inside these two round packets will be printed here in console this is what print does okay so whenever you want to access the documentation like ye wala keyword kya karta hai, what this keyword does what is the function of this keyword then you can obviously just click on this keyword and you will get the documentation like what it does. And if you need more information, then you can open this the documentations of Dart. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, the main main is a function. Okay, whenever you are creating any program in Dart, Dart will try to find its one main injection. Okay, main is the injection of your code. So whenever you are running any code, whenever you are you know compiling anything or when writing code and trying to compile it then dart will always look for this main function if there is no main function then dart will not find anything to go with it will just throw an uncaught exception all right so yeah so this is how a simple hello world program works and void means something what happens is normally see main is a function right and normally a function accepts a return type Okay, so main does not return anything in this case. If you want to return something, then you have to first initialize a type to that function. That's how it goes. Okay, so that's how print uh, print command works in uh, Dart. So Dart just allows you to print this string string on this console, and you are good to go. Now let's see how to declare variables in Dart. So let's create a variable and let's assign the value say yes okay yeah let's give it a name uh, my name okay so you can see a blue line is being shown and this blue line means the value of the local variable my name isn't used so i have declared this variable and i have initialized a value to it but this blue line, blue line denotes that I'm not using that value anywhere. Okay, so I have to use it somewhere. So what I will try to do is I will try to replace this yes with my name. All right. This is what modularity means. You have to just, you know, make your code into different modules and you have to just reuse them or use them at multiple places you want to use. So what I will do is I will type a dollar sign and I will type my name. Okay. Now I will try to run this. We have the same effect. Everything is working fine. If I type my full name here, uh, 
how we have the effect and you can see the value is being fetched uh, fetched from my name into this print statement and we are able to access it so what we are doing is we are writing this inside these two quotation marks so whenever in dart we see quotation marks we should understand that we are talking about string data type okay and using this dollar sign what i am doing is i am using a value of a variable and the variable name is my name and i'm then printing it with the help of print function i hope uh, i make myself clear here okay okay cool so uh, that's how variables work and this thing which i did here in case of print statement this is called string interpolation because i'm accessing a variable inside a string using a dollar sign hope i am clear here so yeah this is how variables work out now if i want to use let's say uh let's type something 23456 in case of numbers you need not to assign any quotation marks any double quotes because numbers work by default the way they are so let's try to run this so you can see hello world my name is 2345 okay this is how it works so i can obviously just roll over here and you have to notice one thing here i am not giving any data type here right i am just simply typing var here var for variable but still when i tap on my name i am being showing i am being shown that it's an integer right it's an int value so why is this happening this is happening because dart has its own dynamic type identifier okay so whenever i write here 2 3 4 5 and i tap on my name i'll be shown that i'm using an int variable an integer type let's try to use a string here yes okay now if i hover over that and click i am being shown i'm being shown that it's a string type so what's happening is every time i'm using or uh, every time i'm giving any data to this variable dart is checking against this variable like which kind of data type it is this is called type checking this is called type checking so what's happening is i'm assigning i'm giving it a value and my dart machine is analyzing type checking in the background like which data type i have so this is a uh, very fundamental and this is how it works all right so let's try to give it a two so hello world my name is true and uh, when i tap on my name i'll be shown a bool so bool uh, is a data type which just you know helps you helps you to assign switches what switches means true and false like when you turn on a light that's a switch you either can turn it on or you can turn it off okay so a uh, bool statement is a true or false zero or one or a switch data type which helps you to give binary values whether it's a one or a zero a true or a false a yes or a no so this is what bool does okay okay now let's see what if i do what if i write 34.45 now let's check out which kind of data type it is so i will go to my name i will tap here and i will see that this is a double kind of data type okay so let me just rephrase everything we discussed few data types here first one was string second one was int third one was bool fourth one was double let's see what are the other possibilities we have so as of now we have discovered four kind of data types in dart okay okay let's see if i can type anything else let's see 34.0 it will still be what it's still a double minus 34 should be an integer right it's an integer okay now uh, let me just put this code here my uh yeah rajiv is asking something uh yeah yeah exactly like auto uh, yeah okay okay cool 
So I hope you understand like how to configure and how to find which variable has what data type, right? Okay. So now we are going to create a function in Dart. Okay. So the syntax of function is. <clears throat> So main is a function here, <clears throat> but main doesn't have any uh, written type, right? So let's create a function with written type. So I need to print my name. Let's say, so my name should be in a string format, okay? So I'm typing string, my name. And then I'll give uh, these curly braces and I will return yes. Okay. With a semicolon. So you are required to enter semicolons uh, with the inside inside the body of a function or a class. Uh, but you're not required to add semicolon here. It's not necessary. And it will end up in an error. So good. So my name is here is a function and it's returning a string. If it's in inside double quotes and it's a string. So what will happen if I try to make it int? Just a minute. Is, is the screen visible? Yeah. So you can see, uh, I have been shown this error by the Dart virtual machine that a value of type string can't be returned from the function my name because it has a written type of integer. Okay, so I'm giving this function a written type integer. Okay, but I'm returning a string. So string and integer are two different data types. And like I mentioned in the presentation, that Dart is a Dart is a statically type language, and it is strict in case of types. Okay. So it will always shout at you whenever you are using uh, incompatible data types. So in this case, the function is written type in, but we are returning a string. So this will not work out. So either what I can do is if I make it four, five, six, and it will stop shouting at me. The error has gone. If I type here pool, it will still shout at me. Like why are you using integer and you're defining function to be a bool type. So it's shouting at me that a value of type int can't be written for the function because it has a return type of bool. So if I type here false, then it will stop shouting at me. All right, I hope I make myself clear here. So let's bring it back to string and return my name, Yash. Okay, let's delete this line. So. In Dart, if you want to comment something, you have to add double slashes. So now this line has been commented. Okay. And if you want to add multi-line comments, then you have this to go with. This is how you add multi-line comments. This is how you add single line comments. And let's now create a variable and let's give it a name. And I'm going to call this function now. Okay, I'm going to write the name of function here. I'm going to end it with a semicolon. Now I'm going to remove this so that you can see everything much clearer. Yeah. You can see I'm again seeing a blue line because I'm not using it anywhere. Dart is telling me that you are not using it anywhere. Okay, so I want to use this. Okay, so what I will do is I will simply type in here name. Now every error goes away. And if I try to run this, hello, my name is Yash. Okay. So what's happening here is this function is returning a Yes, my name is returning yes, and I'm calling my name here. And the variable name is taking the value written by my name, which is yes. Okay, then I'm then I'm indexing this name here in this string. Okay, and this string is then outputting my name that is yes. 
so this is what this is how it's working right now let's do one thing let's try to figure out something more from this uh, like from what we have as of now so you can see uh, when i click on my name i am being shown that it's of string data type right if i tap here on my name if i tap your name so i did not give any data type to name but still cart has figured out that it's of string data type okay so this is a string and we are implicitly also giving a data type string so let's do one thing let's now remove this and try to run this i'm still getting the previous output but you have to notice like what has changed here dart is giving me a general information that the function my name should have written type but it doesn't so it's telling me to add the type to this function okay but still how is dart still figuring out that i have to print here here if i go on my name here you can see now the data type has changed to dynamic previously it was string but now a new data type has emerged which is dynamic so what dynamic is dart figure out everything in the machine like which kind of data type can it be okay so it gives dynamic type whenever it's not able to find out any other data types so it is just type changing again and again just trying to check which kind of data type this function can is returning so in this case it's string okay and it is still able to figure it out that yeah it's string cool so now we have another data type in the list although it shouldn't be a data type but it is considered a data type in dart so we will all so i'm dynamic here so as of now we have encountered four uh what do you think of five kind of data types right okay let's do one thing give it back its name and we are at both okay my name has now become a string data type Uh, any short but keep for command data uh, yeah uh, what well, yeah uh, basically what happens is most of the uh, ides these days have just a uh, shortcut to comment that particular line by using uh, command slash or control slash yeah cool uh, thank you mommy uh, so do we have do you guys have any queries or no So I would understand like if you guys are getting it or not. Like the so basics of data now. Cool, cool. Okay, mom. Perfect. Okay, now let's get back to the slide. Project my whole screen. Oh, my screen is visible. So yeah, we explored dark dark web editors of now and. Uh, So you have to understand it. It's just a playground. You cannot make real life projects here. You can, and to some extent, just test test some snippets and play around with them, and you can share them as well with anyone you want. So if you go to Dartpad, you always have this uh, name assigned to you. Like I have been assigned a silent pool three one five. Like you must be having some different name, and you have an option to share this with anyone you want. So, so it's a good thing, and you can share it up with anyone you want. You can share your code. So, uh, like I uh, mentioned in, in my code as well, uh, we are assigning a name, bad name, and we are assigning it a function. Okay. So, what it is really? So, bad is a declaration keyword which tells Dart that that I want to declare a variable. A name here 
the name is the name of the variable and this entire thing is called a variable declaration and here is the equals to sign which is the initializer and it initializes the value which is being returned by this function and this entire block for variable initialization okay so when you're initializing my, my name it's running my name function in the background and sending the value and that value is being assigned to name and the variable uh, like the name is a variable okay and we have this function this function is string my name so in my case i have string my name and i'm returning a name called yash and in this case also string my name returning a name called stephen so string is the type of the function the type the return type of the function like what i'm going to return so my name is the name of the function and here these two round brackets are called arguments you can type any argument you have you, you want to give it you give it to it and whatever is in inside these curly braces it's called the body or the function the body so what happens is uh, whenever you start a dart program uh, first of all the program starts up and it starts finding main function okay so whenever you wake up you if i don't know if you people wear glasses or not but i wear spectacles so i do realize that whenever i wake up in the morning the first thing i need are my spectacles right because without that i cannot move further out of the bed so similarly if you want to start a fire up a dart program you first need a main function for that and then main function will inject your code against the uh, compilation so this is how it goes so main function is a is a necessary function if i try to remove this main function then from here okay let me remove this and i try to run then yeah obviously yeah, i will get error because there is no main function there is no main method at home and that's why my compilation failed so it's very important to have a main function it is a function where from where everywhere everything starts so like we discussed that every value has a type okay every value has a type and every variable has a type it can reference so what it means is let's come to the first line every value has a type so let's come here we control like this so value here this is our variable okay and here you can see it has a type string similarly the variable name has a type string so this just tells the first two lines which i have discussed here every value has a type and every variable has a type in our case uh, it's a value which is being written by this function and the variable name is name so they both have the type string here so once variable has a type associated the variable's type cannot change okay let me just demonstrate this to you or uh, let me create another variable let's give this variable batman okay and i am typing here blue swain cool now notice here batman is a string type and blue swain is also a string okay so what i will do now is i will give batman number let's say i assign 67 so dart is again shouting at me that a value of type int can't be assigned to a variable type string try changing the type of the variable or casting the right hand type to string so once i have this batman so this variable does not have any data type as of now it is fetching the data type from this thing the value so the value has data type and the batman has received the data type and made its own so now it will always take a string data type never another data so let's give it another name clark kent now it's okay now it's not shouting at me like previously it was doing but if i give it a value like 44 343.45 that will again start shouting at me so what this line means is once the variable has a type associated the variables cannot change their type okay i hope my i hope my i make make myself clear here yeah 
So like I said, uh, dot, you need not to assign uh, types here. So if I want, I can write string here. It will still work out, right? And if I want to create an integer, integer, let's say number, and uh, let's say three, two, three. I am giving it uh, on, a, on a serious note, a number, and I'm giving it on a serious note, a string. So even if I don't give it anything, I just leave it word, then also it will going to it is going to identify which kind of data type it is. So this is how it works. So let's move on to next slide. So Dart basically has these four kind of data types, and uh, uh, so a string can be likewise in double quotes or single quotes. Both way works. Integer can be these types. Double can be these types, and dynamic. Dynamic is the is a kind which identifies which kind of data type it is. So in this case, dynamic will be a string. In this case, dynamic will be a float a double value. And in this case, it will be an integer. So we already saw the case of dynamic data type. I hope it's clear as of now that dynamic will just uh, type check under the hood, like which kind of data type it is. So it's always very easy to go with. So yeah. Why we should not go with the type checking? Uh, th these are some of the issues. Let's say uh, performance can be improved. If you're assigning a value, okay, let, let me just go here. And uh, let me just, uh, so in this case, uh, where until assigned, let me just go here. Okay. So you can see which kind of data type it is. Just a minute. Okay. So here, my name is a dynamic data type. So Dart is trying to compare in the background, like which kind of data type it is. Then it's returning the name against that, right? So I don't want that to happen because whenever this happens, so this is just a small application. But if I have Facebook like a big application and I will define the data type and I'll be just using dynamic in that case. <clears throat> so just imagine that you have under the hood how many computations you have to do. Because type checking is a resource and time consuming task. Right? <clears throat> there was a case uh, Facebook did not initialize uh, something uh, into their big code base, and they just uh, were not able. I mean, in the case, maybe the data type was dynamic. So Facebook was facing an issue: uh, server cost, an extra resource cost of 5.4 million per year, 5.4 million dollars, just because of one single data type. And they were using it in a dynamic manner. Yeah, he issue tha. Just so their computation power bar gayi. So it is always a good practice on a performance basis ki ham hamesha kisi cheez ko type de. So assigning type is really important. So this is what uh, helps. Like if we assign task, the performance can be improved absolutely. Or उससे आपका जो cost है, जो आपके resources का cost है, infrastructure का cost है, वो भी बचेगा. And obviously, when you're working on large projects, you will be easily able to identify like which variable or which function is uh, raising issues if you have a particular type assigned to it. Just imagine if I uh, type here uh, one, two, three, right? Yeah, just imagine this function is something. Uh, let's say you have made an application banaya and you are on the login page and you want user login page, mein, you want user's user ka naam, okay? So you know that always user will have a name in form of string and never in case, never in form of numbers. So, but your function is taking everything because you don't have a function type defined to that. But if you define string there, if you give it a string data type, then you will be shown an error. And the user will also be shown an error ki aap number nahi dal sakte, login ke time there. So it's very important to give your function a particular type, right? This is how it works out. So now user will have to enter his name only. Likewise, 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Less of a need to write unit tests. So unit testing is something where we uh, check the code uh, program by program, function block by block. Ki sab kaam kar raha hai, everything is working out well or not. So this is why uh, types help a lot in that in those cases as well, because you will be able to identify where the issue is. And you can obviously identify simple errors with the help of types. So uh, let's come back to <clears throat> object oriented programming, what objects are, what classes are. So like from the previous slide, I had this picture. Yeah, I had this picture about a class and an object, okay? So you can see uh, this is a woman uh, with, I don't know who she is, but she just demonstrates someone who is doing Kathak or some kind of uh, traditional dance. And this is just the object of that, which means uh, she must be some kind of legend in the field of dancing, or the kind of art, the dance which is this, the traditional art. And she is just a reminiscence, just a, another copy of that. So yeah, that's how we can imagine the same image. And she's standing in the same way as well. So this is the class and this is the object. So I will give a better analogy about this. Uh, let's come to this slide. So what happens whenever you are developing uh, multiple homes in a society, you need not to create the floor plan for every every house, right? You just have to create floor plan for one house and you can replicate it to make millions of house. This is what it means. So this is a class and these are the objects or instances of that class. Am I clear? Like holy is round the corner and people uh, make gujiyas, right? So you might have uh, seen this machine. Uh, this machine. So this machine is the class and the gujia which are created from that. These are the instances or objects of that class. Uh, am I making myself clear here? Okay, there are so many questions. Uh, yeah. So Ansh, uh, what happens is dynamic will identify what will happen whenever dynamic uh, will arise in your code if you're using any function and it does not have a return type. Then Flutter, with, Flutter will uh, assign that uh, return uh, assign that return of the function to be dynamic. Then it will go inside the function and see what it's actually returning. So in this case, uh, I have a return type, okay? So my Dart machine do not need to go inside the function and see what MNM's uh, data type is, right? But if I remove this, hello. But if I remove the string string here, then Dart will technically ha technically have to go inside of this function to see what the return line contains. So it will have to go inside in here and it will have to then port out that value to this name. Can we hold voice the return type of our function? Why is it showing error compiling to JavaScript? Yeah, error compiling to JavaScript is because this Dart pad is internally uh, on, on the, on the uh, what to say, the platform side, it is still compiling that uh, source to source compilation is happening here. So you, I know you're writing Dart code here, but still that Dart code is still being converted into a JavaScript understandable code because this web page you see, this web page is technically uh, a web page and will only understand uh, languages, web languages like JavaScript and all. So this is why it must it is showing that error, and I'll just demonstrate it to you again. So error compiling to JavaScript. It is showing JavaScript because this web page, this website Dart pad is still compiling that Dart code into a JavaScript understandable code for this browser. So what, what this thing is called, this is called source to source compilation. Source to source compilation. 
the source to source compilation means uh, it, uh, technically this thing is called transpilation it means con converting code of one language into another language and that language is understandable by that particular software so this browser this web browser i'm using it is brave uh, it's a chrome based browser chromium based browser so this browser understands javascript based code only but here we are writing dart code right so we need to have some kind of intermediation between them and that intermediation uh, is happening because of a transpiler so they must be having a uh, dart virtual machine sitting somewhere which is just converting this dart code and we are able to see it on the javascript pages web pages right so this is why the first line denotes and the real error actually lies here that no main method is found and that's why the compilation failed all right okay let me just uh, look at more errors why is she showing error compiling the javascript please no difference between where and uh why don't i actually uh did that on ansh uh ansh sharma's question so i think i hope my i uh like it's clear in my case when i ring the batman to clock and it's saying the name is already defined uh okay the var is used as a syntax to declare a variable and when that variable is not assigned with a data type dart considered as a dynamic absolutely sort of so var is used as a syntax to declare a variable absolutely you're correct when that variable is not assigned with a data type dart technically considered as a dynamic but at that point of time it has already received the data from that return type of the function or the a value of the of the variable which you have given to it so when var and dynamic data type can be used so what happens is you are already assigning variable with some name and that name is being as initialized with some value okay so that value has some type and that type instantly that gets replaced from the dynamic to that particular type any number can we can be also string also when you get it by any string input method so how how uh, that numerical username will co cause error okay uh, you are asking that any number can also be string absolutely it can be a string you have to just put it inside two uh, quotation marks and when you get it by any string input method so how that numerical username will cause it? yeah that totally depends upon the implementation okay so you might be aware of some cyber security attacks where people go to websites and they just type something like star and xxe like there are some kind of attacks uh, what people do is they they go to web browsers they go to particular websites and they try to do these attacks i'm not sure which kind of attack it is i'm not aware about the name but uh, that's how they attack into their you know sql servers and their databases so what if you don't allow that here that they won't if you, if you don't allow that kind of symbols to be added like if if i disallow that i won't accept these symbols here okay so they can anyways uh, prevent that attack to happen on this particular website so uh, this uh, these are like one of few of the use cases you can have if you're taking a username in form of number in in case of symbols or in case of strings yeah absolutely cross site script attack yeah 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 and there are few more attacks like xsc attacks and all uh, yeah okay so i was at class <laughs> i was i was showing like what gujias are so uh, these machines are called classes and the gujias which are generated from them are called uh, objects or instances okay so let me just create a class let's move it let's create a class and let's give that class a name let's say person the famous example so the class has its own body all right now let's give it a name let's say first name mm h Uh, 
Oh, like every other Dart program, we have to create a main function. And uh, now we will create an object of that person. OK, so let's create a variable. And it will be uh, of type Mera person. OK. And I will initialize that person here. I have to okay. I have to give it a data type. So now it's a string first name Yash, and now I have created an instance or object of person here. So if I created an object of this, then I, I am obviously able to access the value. So let's uh, access or write that value somewhere. So let's give it Mira. Person dot first name equal to some value uh, MNL. Cool. Now we can see what happens see i'm able to create uh, i'm i'm able to instantiate that uh, object and i can give that object my value and i can use it anywhere right so let's say i want to use or create so this is this is like the basic syntax of class and that's how you create objects of class and use them to give values Okay, so I hope. Uh, what's the time? I we just have eight minutes to go. Uh, I think we should pause this here, and we should just. Uh, I think this is good for the basics to go with. I will also tell like what constructors are, like uh, what constructor functions are, and how to create. Uh, like everything about the OOP is still pending, so we will just do a quick uh, recap whenever we meet next. Uh, 10 minute recap will work and we will go on with it. Until then, we should pause this. Uh, okay, so I just want to know how many people have installed a uh, Flutter, Flutter setup, like totally set up into their laptops, and I would just like them to create an application as of now. Okay, uh, Bhomik, Bhomik has done, Ansh has done, so most of the people are done, I guess. So I think we should create uh, and start with our first application to fire up. So we just have seven minutes and I'm going to show you how fast Twitter is in these seven minutes. Okay, let me just fire up my terminal. So I already have Flutter installed. And this thing will work for all the free platforms which you which you people are on. So let me just clear this up. And I am on the latest version of Flutter, which was released in in the initial days of this month only, March. So I'm going to create my first Flutter project. So I have two ways to create my Flutter project. First one is via this uh, terminal. Second one is uh, from VS Code. I will show you both of the ways. So let me first start with terminal. So you both, uh, you, you people must be aware about terminal commands. There are a few terminal commands. I'm going to tell you what these commands do. Okay, let's clear this up. Here is used for clearing the command or uh, clearing the terminal. Let me go to my home directory. To go to home directory, in my case, it's CD. So CD will take me to my home directory. I can just go over there. And you can see my laptop's name is users. Stan is my home directory. Cool. Now I'm going to CD desktop. I'm going to press tab and I'm inside my desktop. Okay. So I have four screenshots here. These screenshots are right here. And I have one folder called everything. So you can see this folder is here. I will delete these screenshots and I will do LS. So now I just have this one folder everything. Okay. 
Now I'm going to create one more folder. And I will name it Fiesh uh, first app. OK. I created and you can see this folder is present here now. So MKDIR just makes a directory. OK. I will now I will change my directory. I will CD change directory and I will go inside this directory. So I will see Yash uh, and I will press tab. I will be inside this folder. So I'm inside Yashka first app. OK. Now I am going to create my Flutter application and the command to create Flutter application is Flutter create. What is the date today? 22 March, right? So March 22. March 22 will be my app name, okay? Okay, so now my Flutter application all the files required files in my Flutter application has been totally saved in here. So I will go inside and I will go inside Mar2 and you can see I have these files. First one is Android. This is Android specific directory. Second is iOS. This is iOS specific directory. And third one is web. This is for web uh, web based uh, code. And this is for test. Test is used for testing purposes. When you want to test your Flutter code, you'll be using this. A readme will contain the information about the uh, project this application upsec is used for uh, getting packages and plugins upsec lock is used to uh, keep a log of things and this iml file just stays here it is self-generated so i will tell function of all of these in brief uh, in much detail but for now it's okay for to go okay so now it's telling me to run this application first cd march 22 okay i will copy this I will paste this done Then it's asking me to flutter run. Okay. I will copy this. I will paste this and I will flutter run. So it's going to take time. Now I don't have any device connected to my laptop. Neither I have my iOS emulator running neither or neither. I have my Android phone connected to this laptop. Neither I have any emulator. But after the recent Flutter 2 upgrade, Flutter web will work fine because I have web browser to see my application, right? So this will just load the web application as of now. And I've also start my term, uh, Apple simulator as well. So this is my iPhone 11 Pro uh, simulator. Let it start up and we will also see the application to be created for web. Okay, so you can see uh, this is my iPhone. I can technically do everything iPhone can do here. And this is our first application. It has launched here. Yeah, so this is the first application. Whenever you're going to build, Flutter already had the boilerplate code to make this application, okay? So the, what this application does is, it just tells you like how many times you have pressed the button, okay? So this is running on a local host server created by the Dart virtual machine. And if I want to change anything, then I can obviously change and I can see the changes happening with the help of uh, R to hot reload, R to hot restart. So we all will discuss everything, each and everything in the next uh, lecture, same time tomorrow. Uh, now, let me just close this. Now I'm going to see my Flutter devices. Flutter devices will technically show you how many devices are connected to this laptop or are compatible with the uh, uh, Flutter software to be Flutter application to be run. So you can see I have iPhone 11 Pro mobile phone. Okay. And second, I have a Chrome web browser. Okay. Now I want to run my Flutter application on this mobile phone. Okay. So let's 
Twitter run. Oh, it will ask me which device I want to run on. So by default, the basic priority will be given to emulator, this simulator. So now it's running on iPhone 11 Pro in debug mode. So let's wait for our application to fire up. Like I previously mentioned, Xcode is a tool you need in case of Mac devices. Xcode is the entire development software you need for developing any application for Apple devices, from Apple Watch to Apple TV to Apple phones. Okay, I have Android Studio installed on my PC. Okay, perfect. You can use Android Studio instead of VS Code. Yes, absolutely. You can use Android Studio instead of VS Code. There is no foundation for you to use VS Code. I use VS Code basically for the plugins which it offers. Okay, so VS Code has wonderful plugins and it is technically lightweight than Android. Uh, I want my system to be lightweight. That's why I go with VS Code. Uh, there is no other foundation. You can use Android Studio as well how to download the simulator for android okay uh, i actually will tell you like how to download uh, emulator for android just let me just complete this the yeah, apple simulator will not work on windows uh, there are a few tools but again those two those tools you know will be very hard on your system memory they will consume a lot of memory and you will not see changes happening much frequently Yeah, absolutely, Rajiv. I have seen multiple scenarios where people are using Hackintosh in their virtual machines. Uh, but Hackintosh also has a downside that it is not uh, giving you the OEM, that is original manufacturing uh, widgets, oh, sorry, components to go with. Yeah, it's, it's obvious that now they are not working in Windows. So you see, uh, now the application is ready. The same application which we ran on web is now also running on our iPhone. So yeah, this is the power of Flutter. So it just took me eight minutes, only just eight minutes to show you like to run the application, to fire up the basic application on both the platforms. So let me just create new tab. Let me go to desktop. Let me go to Yeshka first tab. And let me go inside CD Mar V2. Let me open VS Code here. So this is the code which is running inside this emulator, right? I will go inside main.dart. Right now you need not to worry about the code. I will explain everything. And all these things are very easy. Okay, uh, you can see here the color is blue, right? I want to change it to orange. Let me save this file. Let me hit R. Now the color has instantly been changed to orange. So you can see how fast Flutter is. Okay, so this whole method was from was by creating an application from your terminal. And tomorrow I will show you how to create application from your VS Code as well. Uh, I think time is already passed. You guys must be late for your daily uh, daily errands. So I hope you learned something new today, especially about the language Dart. So yeah. I think we can wrap wrap today's session. Yeah, and new keyword is not necessary. It just tells you that you are creating an object from a particular class. So 
you can always skip new if you want to write new it's a very good practice because new keyword is used in multiple languages when it comes to create objects of classes so it's really a good practice to write new but if you want you can skip in case of dart okay one thing is this app costs 108 mb in android too much for a simple thing no actually what you are seeing there rajiv is a debug application and that app data gets cleared up when you create a build for something okay so there are few kind of application first one is debug second one is uh, build and third one is app bundle so uh, build technically comes under build release okay so there are three kind of apks which gets built yes aurav i actually will have to tell you about android simulator but i'll have to join it from a windows laptop because uh, running apple simulator and android emulator together will just uh, you know will be hard on my max memory so that's why i will just join uh, maybe tomorrow and show you for all the four platforms okay raji you want the code for this right okay cool uh, i will just share everything in the github repository i already have a github repository uh, let me just share the code Okay, I'll have to make it public first. Yeah. So this is a repository I have, Twitter Tech Drill. You can obviously go over there, and I will also share the link for the same. So it contains the basic code. I will also slowly, slowly add code to that, so you can obviously refer to that for your whole lifetime. Thank you, Ansh. I hope today's session was okay enough. Uh, you guys weren't bored. Oh, cool. So I hope you have a good day today, and uh, we will meet possibly tomorrow as well. And thanks for the great strength we had today, and it was really awesome. Thank you, Sujit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.